Fire Emblem 8 has one of my favorite reclassing systems where units can promote into one of two options when they promote from their base class. However, most of those promotion options are pretty lopsided and there's usually one option that's way better than the other one. So I thought it would be interesting to rebalance the classes and see what you could do to them to make the promotion choices a little more interesting. To help, I brought on my friend Akira, who is about as deranged about FE8 as I am. So we're going to go through the classes one at a time, look at each promo choice, and see what we can do to make them a little more balanced or interesting. So what we're doing here today is we're taking some of the classes, well, all of the classes from FE8, and rebalancing their promotion choices because a lot of them are pretty lopsided. Um, but there's a couple things we wanted to mention before we do that. Yeah, so firstly, we're going to be doing classes in order of recruitment. So if it seems like we're doing things out of order, that's why. <laughs> yeah, you also may notice there's two of us. Uh, and with that in mind, we also split the video into two halves. So half of the classes are going to be on my channel, Actual Lizard. Uh, and the other half are going to be on Akira's channel. Yeah, so... No, no matter which side you're watching this from, because we're doing the same intro, check out the other side. Yeah! We're also doing trainees at the end, even though we said we're doing them in recruitment order. Uh, we're not doing the trainees in recruitment order, because they're very weird and different, so we're yeah, doing them separately. The trainees are the trainees are a whole moment. It takes a really long time <laughs> to explain the trainees. <laughs> yeah, that segment, I believe, is going to be about 35 minutes. Yeah. We are also trying to, like, okay, so obviously as part of, like, our rebalance, like, we're going to be rebalancing different stats. However, one stat we're going to be trying to not move... One mo one stat we're going to try to not move is move. <laughs> yeah, we figured, like, we like that right now you can look at a unit and know how far they can move. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want people to have to, like check movement range every time to see if the enemy has the move that you like to see if to see which version of the move the enemy has mm -hmm. yeah it's like the version it's like that mod of engage which increases like arm knight move which like realistically will just catch the player off guard more than anything yeah um the other changes that we're making here um, will be considered in terms of how they apply to relevant units. So, like, uh, an example of that is Gilliam. Uh, he is the only male armor knight, so he is the only unit that the uh, male armor knight promotion bonuses matter for, so we're going to be mm -hmm. looking at his stats and what he needs uh, when looking at those promotion changes. Yeah, so, like... In other words, like, it doesn't, like, it's not relevant to the context if we just, like, come up with, like, very generic contexts in which we're going to be applying these promotion bonus changes to, so we're thinking about these units specifically. Yep, and lastly, we're not aiming for complete balance here. Uh, our goal is to make changes, in some cases, to make things more equal. I'd say usually to make things more equal, at least. Yeah. Um, but often to make choices more distinct and fun, because there's some classes that there's no great way to make them balanced without just kind of turning them into the same class. Yeah, I mean, there's some classes there's no way of doing that or turning them into the same class, and then especially since we decided that we're not going to be changing move, like, there's only so much you can really do to, to like, balance things out entirely, right? So we might as well just try to make it more fun. Yeah, so basically we're trying to keep some distinctiveness for each class, uh, even at the cost of balance. Mm -hmm. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first class that we're looking at is Cavalier, and I think this is one of the more lopsided promotion paths in base Fire Emblem 8. What do you think about it, Akira? Okay, yeah, I mean, all that we need to look at in order to prove that point is the minus one move on Great Knight. Feels real bad. So Probably bad. the the saddest stat we are going to see in this video. Yeah, I mean, like, as well, I remember both of us were really shocked that, like, both Great Knight and Paladin gained the same amount of defense on promo. Like, that just seems really weird. Yeah, like, you think of Great Knight as bulky, as the bulkier promotion, right? And I guess, like, technically it's slightly bulkier. It's got plus one HP. Come on. <laughs> so much bulk. So much bulk. Um, what Great Knight does have going for it is mildly better combat. The plus one strength and the plus one speed aren't irrelevant. 
Uh, yeah. But it's hard to make up for the the two point gap in speed. Yeah, it's worth noting as well that like the plus or four move, con that um, Great Knight has is like somewhat relevant for I believe like Franz especially if you were to try to have him see combat with a heavier weapon. But like, it's kind of irrelevant because he's not reaching the combat relative to other units anyway at that point. Yeah, axe access is also something. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's amazing, but like. You will use axes if you go Great Knight. Yeah, it's just the thing about like, well, when you already have javelins, is there any need for the hand axes as well? Not really. Yeah, it's not a huge boon. So, what we did to hopefully improve the disparity here a bit, we don't think this makes the choice perfectly balanced, we just want to give Great Knight a bit more of a niche. We gave Great Knight a two-point lead in speed by taking one away from Paladin. We think Paladin is pretty strong, but we think a lot of its strength is tied up in its mobility. Mm -hmm. So, adding that strength to, or adding the speed to Great Knight, making it a little faster, uh, makes it more differentiated as the combat promotion. Yeah, because, because like as Lizard said, right, like it, Paladin's all about the mobility. If you're having Seth do all of your main. Paladin combat and your Paladin 2 is only there for rescue dropping, it doesn't really matter what the stats are, so the point of speed loss isn't going to make a difference regardless. Yes, and then we also, we thought it was weird that the defense was the same, so we took one off Paladin and one on Great and, and added one to Great Knight. Uh, and then just to like differentiate them a bit, we actually gave Paladin one resistance in exchange, which is certainly a bad trade for Paladin. Well, it's uh, not even we that. Like it's that not it... even that we gave Paladin one extra res. We just took away the res yeah. point on Great Knight promo. Yeah, I, I mean one extra in comparison. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but just to differentiate them a bit, where Great Knight has better physical bulk and Paladin has slightly better magical bulk for yeah it's just know, it's just what, for flavor. what limited value that's worth it's just for flavor it's for fun <laughs> uh yeah so our hope here is that if you promote your cavalier to a great knight you actually see notably better combat from them and mm -hmm. maybe you might like think about that on erica route because you have a lot of combat that uh your main cavalier that isn't seth needs to do yeah, probably still I, better to go paladin but yeah i recall that um like when we were looking at the speed differences we were thinking that especially kyle might benefit from it in terms of speed yes i think kyle appreciates the extra speed uh even franz will appreciate it with that con for doubling with steel weapons or heavier axes and the defense as well is pretty big for franz i feel like yeah because he can be a little squishy mm -hmm. so yeah we hope that uh, this will make Great Knight a little bit more relevant for combat. Yeah, at least this way it'll be more relevant for something. <laughs> yeah, and Great Knight's going to come up again here as our next uh, class that we're looking at is Knight, uh, a.k.a. Gilliam, because we're looking at the, the male version of the class. And what yep. do you think about this uh, promotion choice in the base game, Akira? So, actually, wait. This might be... It might be more unbalanced, maybe, than like the Great Knight versus Paladin choice, because like you like you already have to train Gilliam in order to get this promotion option available. <laughs> yeah, this is you're right. This is probably the most lopsided choice in the game. Yeah, um, it's it's nice at least that like General like has a point of speed in addition to like the two point of extra con. But this is once again another case in which like we were surprised at how much defense Great Knight gains in the reverse because we were shocked that like General and Great Knight both gain two defense on promo. Like, it just seems so weird. Yeah, well, you do get big shield though. Ah, uh, yes, me when the shield is big. <laughs> For real though. <clears throat> Enemy level percent chance of proccing. What a horrific skill. Yeah, for the uninitiated, big shield. What, what's it? Is it called big shield in this or is it great shield? I think, I, it's think it's, shield. I think it's great shield in this. But what it does is there is an enemy's level percent chance for Gilliam in general to take no damage. Which is both low percent and Gilliam already takes low damage. So it's like too low to be reliable against mages. Yeah. Against physical units, he's already fine. Yeah, against physical units, he's already fine. And even against, like, magical enemies, with, like, the free speed from general, he, one, probably isn't getting doubled by most magical enemies to begin with, with, like, very little investment if you've already got him to level 10 to promote. And then additionally, like, his res is kind is actually, like, middling. It's, like, fine. So he's fine. It's, like, below average, but it's not garbage. Yeah. 
It's like he's fine. <laughs> he's he's fine against um, mages as a general. It's just that he you don't want the general. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, the big problem here is just that the general's combat isn't appreciably better. Basically, the main thing you're looking at combat-wise is that one extra point of speed. Uh, the con isn't a big deal for Gilliam. Yeah, he already has con. He already has con. So the point of move is just much a much bigger deal than that point of speed. So what we tried to do to make this choice... A little more balanced, or really to make it, it wasn't at least make it, more fun. Yeah, it wasn't to general. make it balanced, it was just to make it more interesting. <laughs> yeah, is we gave General a point of strength and a point of defense so that General has appreciably better combat than Great Knight. And, and then we, also... we gave it Provoke! So, yes. um, so what Provoke does is it's a skill which you might recognize from Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn from Shinon, that most charming of characters, which means that. When it's an FE8 skill system, like, enemies will always go for the person with Provoke. It's not like the Path of Radiance version where, like, there's this weird priority system that no one seems to really understand entirely. Like, they will just always try to attack him. Yeah, so then you have this this great combat unit that enemies will actually hit. And, you know, maybe there's some interesting things you can do with that. I do think that this class uh, decision shows how powerful move is because... Now, looking at the differences here, General is ahead in every single stat. Yeah. And I still think it's Great Knight and not close for, uh... I for agree. Which one you should use. I agree. But, like, as we said, like, it was this was mostly to make it more fun as a choice. Like, some people really like using their General to, like, take no damage, steamroll through loads of enemies on enemy phase, and that's completely fine. So this is a choice yeah. for those people Yeah, our, our hope mind. here is that if you used this General it would at least fulfill the general fantasy for you of having a really good combat unit that takes a bunch of hits. Yeah, and also because the animations are fucking cool. Wait, should I be swearing? Because the animations are fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, you can say whatever you want. Neat. Uh, just, uh... <laughs> Next up we have Priest, and this is the first promo option that's like actually kind of close. I think depending on the way that you play Sacred Stones. Yeah. Um, so I feel like this will be a surprise to most people, because I feel like most people are very high on Slayer, but neither of us are particularly high on it, actually. Well, especially for Mulder. Yeah, especially for Mulder. Uh, Mulder's combat is not going to be amazing in either of these classes. We think the main reason you use Mulder is to use the staves. Yeah. And you'd rather do combat with your actual good combat units, so we're not that high on Slayer here. Yeah. Because of that, the main thing we're looking at is that staff plus 40. And this is where I was saying it matters kind of how you play the game. Mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. you're playing pretty fast and maybe Mulder does not have like A staves when he promotes, like maybe he's on B or maybe like it's later in the game when he promotes, mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm. not going to have time to grind him to S. Uh, then it's good to go Bishop, because that Staff plus 40 will get you on your way to S, and he can use that Latona in the last couple maps of the game. Yeah, it's worth noting that, uh, like, even if you are playing at a really fast pace, it's, like, really reasonable to get him to A staves. In this case, it's really about Latona, because especially if you're not doing the whole LTC, Ultra Rig, everything, having Latona is actually quite a nice boon to have on your side. Yeah, especially... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, especially for the last map in the game, uh, Latona is very important for the um, one of the more reliable quick clears of that map. Um, however, if you're playing a little slower and you're going to hit S rank regardless, like maybe you promote him a little earlier then, and you don't really need the staff plus 40, then like you might go Sage, because Anima is better than Light Magic, and yeah wanted to use him for combat for some reason if he wanted to grind his uh, <laughs> his tome rank to s he's one of the few units that doesn't like get way down by excalibur. excalibur yeah it's really funny basically this promotion yeah. just isn't that important it's slower no play, to be honest it, it almost doesn't matter which you go with yeah i agree but still like we decided that it was kind of weird that like with the with the way it looks right it kind of looks like bishop's meant to be there for like the staff rank, we thought it was strange that Sage didn't, like, actually give the same amount of magic, so that was just the only difference we made to it. We had a point of magic. Yep. So, pretty straightforward one. If you need the staff rank, go Bishop, and you can go Sage if you want him to do combat. 
for some reason. Once again, we need to specify this is for, like if you just want him to see combat for some reason. Yes, but next we have Monk, and and which is Arter, and this is the unit where Slayer actually kind of does matter. Well, at al least well, on also, Eric well, also, I just find it hilarious that like we've just gone from Bishop Sage's options, and now we're back here to Bishop Sage's options. <laughs> <laughs> but this one's a little different. This one's a little different. It's because true, it's for true, Mulder, it is. We thought it didn't matter much. For this one, I think we agree that Bishop is just the way to go. Yes, definitely. Sea staves. Uh, and the reason for that is sea staves, and it's mostly sea staves. It's mostly but sea also, staves. Slayer does matter a little, like, a little bit on Erica route. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Creeping Darkness appreciates it. And also, um, Village of Silence. My beloved. Yeah, you have some of those fast gargoyles and and mouth dugs yep. that Seth can't necessarily one round, depending on how his speed levels went. Mm -hmm. um, but Arter usually can. Yeah, or like definitely like even if for some reason like he doesn't double, like maybe you promoted him early and he didn't get like sp speed blessed or something. Yeah, then still like do heavy ship. Then like yep. they'll be able to team up for a kill on a threatening enemy for sure. Mm hmm. So those are the reasons why we like uh, Bishop a little better, given that the stats are fairly similar. Actually, Bishop has the edge in magic here too. So yeah, That's I don't, I don't, nice. I don't know what the idea was with like having Bishop gain more. Magic. I assume that the idea was the higher magic compensates for the fact that you're using light tomes. Yeah, I mean that that is reasoning that exists but like i don't even like that reasoning because then it's like if the point of light tomes is that they're supposed to be weaker why are we giving magic to compensate right like yeah it's just that's weird. supposed to be the cost of using light tomes yeah basically um, right? and this one we made very few changes to Mulder's promotion uh, we made a lot of changes to Arter's promotion yeah the first thing that we did is that we've introduced a new stat that gets increased upon promo gains. The yeah. luck stats. Our yes. So our goal with this particular set of promotion changes was to make Sage the more compelling option for combat and Bishop the more compelling option for staff utility. Mm. So to do that, we ba uh, balanced out the magic so it's the same. We gave Sage a point of speed, which Arthur does care about. We also gave him a point of con, which he does also care about. Because his yeah, con's so not particularly he'll double, high. He'll double more stuff in Sage. Um, we did the same thing with Defense and Res that we did with Paladin and Great Knight, which is to differentiate them a bit since we wanted Sage to be better in uh, combat. Uh, we gave Sage a, a one-point lead in Defense versus Bishop's one-point lead in Res. And then we added luck. Yeah, also Why did really... we add luck, Akira? I mean, like, okay... <laughs> Magvel is just a really like unlucky nation, but uh, even among the that even among like how unlucky everyone in Magvel is, like Altar is like is real bad. He's real unlucky. He's so prone yeah, to getting crit. I've... It's so awful like when you use him in Iron Man because you're always just looking at anything where he gets attacked and you're like, this is there's like a legit chance you just die here. I was gonna say it's something that I didn't fully appreciate until I Iron Man this game. Like, just how annoying it is that his luck is low. He it's faces so annoying. everyone. You understand what I mean now when I say it's so annoying when a unit's luck is low? Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, Arthur faces crit from actually everyone. So if you're playing in an... I mean, it's it's annoying in a regular run, too. But, like, especially in an Iron Man where you see, like, a 5% crit. Um, and that kind of becomes unacceptable. Um, <laughs> so, so an extra three points of luck is good here. He'll still face crit from some things, but oh yeah, like less. like there's no way that like without like the hot point guard, he's not gonna face crit from like berserkers or swordmasters. But also, he shouldn't be fighting them anyway, even if he yeah, were. Yeah. So I, I think <laughs> I think this becomes a, a more interesting choice, especially on Ephraim route where you don't care about Slayer so much. Yeah. Uh, Sage starts to look a lot better as a combat option there. Yeah, I mean, it's still worth noting, of course, that, like, the Sea Staves is still extremely strong, um, given that, like, Arta is one of the characters that's able to actually reach, like, the magic threshold for the Chaps 20 warp, but Saleh can do it as well, and actually, like, joins with Staves already, so there's that. Like, you don't need Arta to hit the ranks for it. 
yeah, it's just nice, especially since, especially in Ephraim route, where you get him a little earlier and you get Saleh a little later. Yeah. So, like, it's but kind yeah, of... yeah, we an think it's a bit question. more of a choice here. Mm -hmm. Alright, next up is Pegasus Knight. What do you, what do you think about this class choice in the base game? Um... Okay, this one's also very wildly unbalanced, but I mean, like the case of Gilliam, it's not like as unbalanced as that choice because like Vanessa and Tana are actually units that can do things. <laughs> um, and the big reason for that is that con difference, which is basically a three point speed lead for Wyvern Knight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't look so lopsided until you look at the con. But that is basically just three speed. Yeah, it's... At least with all but the lightest weapons. Yeah, and like, if you're telling me that you're having them use Slim Lancers, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, that's the... They want to use the heavier weapons. Yeah, exactly. They have, uh, they got some noodle arms. Yeah. Particularly Vanessa really wants to use some heavier weapons. It's true, she really does. Like, she loves, she loves that energy drop from chapter 7, if you can get Colm to steal it. She really loves yeah. it. Wyvern Knight also gets Pierce, which has some amount of value. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, so it's very valuable in, in LTCs, as, uh, as you know. But, like, oh God, even yeah. outside of LTC, I think Pierce is one of the few skills in FE8 that's, like, actually a value add. Um, yeah, I agree. Like, I think that, like, with the case of Pierce, given that, like, this isn't really a game where, like, you necessarily suffer if you end up killing, like, one more enemy than you're planning on it. Like, it's not the case where, like, you kill an extra enemy and therefore, like, your unit's absolutely guaranteed dead, right? So, like, you can afford to kill the extra enemy on enemy phase in this already very enemy fo phase focused game. Yeah, and there are also times where you can do something like slap a Brave Lance on a on um a wyvern knight and like gamble on a pierce and then if they hit it like maybe you save another unit in action um so i'm not gonna say it's amazing but i do think it's an actual value add unlike like great shield i think doesn't factor in at all for general uh pierce I yeah think factors a little bit. it helps that okay i mean like pierce's proc rate isn't exactly amazing either because it's like the actual units level percent um, yep. Which, funnily enough, means that if you have a Wyvern Knight attack a general, uh, there's the same percentage chance of the Wyvern proccing Pierce as there is of the general proccing Big Shield. That is funny. But, like, but yeah, like, Pierce is actually something that exists, while Big Shield just doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So, what we did to try to balance this one out a bit was uh, level out the speed a bit. We, did well, we, leveled out the speed, we leveled out the speed a lot. Like, we took away a yeah. point of speed from Wyvern, we took away two points of Con from Wyvern, and we gave a point of speed to Falco. Yeah, I mean, Falco actually has a functional speed lead now, yeah? Yeah, because we've gone from it being, like, three sp speed in favor of Wyvern Knight to it being one speed in favor of Falco Knight when we're looking at the overall speed rating from adding together speed and Con gains. Yeah, but that makes sense to me. I mean, I feel like when a new player does the Pegasus Knight promotion, they expect Falco Knight to be the fast one. Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, like, even other Fire Emblem games confirm that, right? Like, um, like, my understanding of, like, the DSFE games is that, like, Falco Knight has, like, a better speed cap than does Wyvern, Fal than, like, Draco Knight. So, like, I, it's, I the, it's very, correct, yeah. it's, so it's, like, very intuitive. So it kind of goes against that when, like, Wyvern Knight says it being faster <laughs> in vanilla. <laughs> Yeah, we also balanced out the skill. I think we've done that on a few classes and not talked about why. We just think it's weird sometimes. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, weird. like we don't really know why the Wyvern Knight has plus one skill, so we gave the Falco Knight plus one skill. Yeah, we also added more things to Falco. So we raised, like, the D swords upon promotion to C swords. I mean, okay, it doesn't really, like, matter, but, like, it does make it more reliable in terms of having, you know weapon triangle control against a larger proportion of enemies, and then we also gave Falcon Knight Savior. Yes, and do you want to talk about what Savior does? Sure. So, like Provoke, Savior is also a skill that originated from the Tellius games, and what it does is that it removes the rescue penalties when you rescue a unit. So normally when you rescue someone, it halves both your skill and your speed, 
but when you've got the savior skill, it guarantees that your stats remain exactly the same. Yeah, so our hope here was to carve out Falco Knight a niche as the premier rescuing option in the game. Also just like the more like reliable one, like like I feel like making it the more reliable like rescue dropper like kind of adds to that, right? Because it means like if you do mess up with someone else, like the Falco Knight can kind of be there to like add that stability back in to your play. Mm. Yeah, this is one where we made some pretty heavy changes here. I think this is the first one where the changes I think might have actually made the worst one the better one now. Yeah, it's possible. Um, it's very possible. <laughs> which is which is interesting, I think. I think, like, if we were to test this, mm -hmm. um, like, there would be other ways that we could balance it out, I think, without changing any of the things we changed. Like, maybe if Falco felt a little too strong, you could give Wyvern a little more bulk or something. Yeah, or um, maybe, like, give Wyvern like, an extra point of strength, perhaps? Because I feel like you'd yeah. expect the Wyvern to be stronger than the Falcon Knight as well. Yeah, so this is one that definitely... Maybe more changes could be made too. But at least this would make Falcon Knight like a real option. Yeah. Uh, and Wyvern Knight would definitely still see use in certain contexts. Yeah, because like... like you would definitely still use Wyvern in LTC. Oh uh, yeah, like, like, LTC. like, like Pierce. Like, 0% LTC, Cormag, Wyvern Knight, Brave Lance, loves it. All right, so next up we have Fighter. And while we were doing this, I think we came to the conclusion that Garcia is the best GBA fighter. Yeah, which is- which really is, depressing. It's really depressing. But his promo options are kind of fun, or at least one of them is. Yeah, well, so, I mean, well, I mean, one of them is, so it's not interesting. <laughs> no, it's not interesting, but I do like it when you promote him and he gets plus two speed. Yep. Uh, Garcia's big problem as a unit is that he doesn't double things. Uh, yeah. And he's also, like, a little less bulky than you would expect later in the game, I think. Because uh, his defense isn't that good. I mean, him but... being, like, less bulky than you'd expect is also partly because of the speed thing. Because, like, it's not the case that, like, his speed is at the point where, like, he doesn't double things. It's also at the point where, like, he often can get doubled Sometimes by he things. Sometimes doubled, yeah. And as you said, especially but... with his, like, low defense... Like, you can really feel it. Yeah, but offensively, his problem is really that speed, because his strength is very high. Yep. When he doubles, he tends to one round, mm -hmm. but he doesn't double all that often. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, because, like, we've kind of come back to, like, what I like to think of as being, like, the speed rating thing of speed and con, where, like, technically, we've got the same speed rating gain, because we've gained two speed and hero, and two con and warrior, but... Garcia is a thick man. He does not need more corn to like. Yeah, so that's kind of the <laughs> difference between like Garcia and the Pegasus Knights is they're actually losing speed to their heavy weapons. Yeah, uh, Garcia is not really losing speed to most weapons, even in Hero. So yeah. most of the time, he's just two points faster in Hero. It also like it doesn't help as well that like while Hero actually like gains speed, like you already don't care about the additional weapon type that you get from promoting him to either line, really. Like, D-Swords, that's not a high enough rank to join with where actually, like, where, like, you would try to seriously use it in a serious context for anything, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, I don't know what you're really doing with D-Bows, like, you can just have yes, them using maybe, hand axe. Maybe you could shoot a gargoyle. I mean, but, I guess, but, it, like... But it's not that important. Yeah, it's not. It's really not. I also think it's weird, and this is, uh, we had this issue with a couple other classes. I find it strange that they give the same amount of strength. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't guess it. Because at least if, like, let's say Warrior gave, like, three strength or something, at least you could say, well, he doesn't double much anyway. This way, at least he's doing, like, better chip, and maybe he one shot something. Yeah, especially if you decide that you're going to, like, even though he obviously doesn't have the crit bonus from Berserker, if you were to, like, give him a killer axe, then you can be like, well, it means he's now doing six more damage on his crits. Yeah, because I do think something that, that goes a little under-discussed uh, with this class change is I feel like sometimes people, like, talk about the hero's two-speed, like, it fixes his speed, and now he doubles. No, uh, he not. doubles. He doubles some things with the yeah. hero's speed. <laughs> he does not double most things with the hero's speed. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, with the hero speed, and especially if you were to, like, get him up to Gom, then obviously at that point, like, he probably would double most enemy types, but, like, that's 
a different question entirely, I feel like. Yes, yes, I would agree. So, what we did, with that in mind, we actually gave Hero one more speed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our goal here was, this is a unit we kind of wanted to buff. Yeah. Um, so, the goal was to make both promotion options better, and also the decision a little more interesting. So, we gave Hero one more speed, uh, so that hopefully he doubles some more things, gets doubled by less things. Mm -hmm. Warrior, the big change here, we gave it plus one strength just because I thought it was dumb that they had the same strength. Yeah, and I agree. But the big change here is Rally Strength. <laughs> yep. So what Rally Strength does, it's, you'll know this if you're familiar with Modern Fire Emblem, uh, it gives, what is it, plus four in the skills patch? Yeah, it's plus four in the skills patch in, like, for units in a two-tile, like, radius. So, like, more than just, like, the... Well, I mean, okay, Engage has changed that. But further than, like, the, um, you know, the plus four to, like, one single target that you might have gotten used to from, from Three Houses, for instance. Yeah, so the idea here is that Warrior gets a strong support option, where maybe you could do something like Rally Strength on a flyer before they fly over a mountain to kill someone, um, or make it easier to hit a one-rounding threshold on a tricky boss, like maybe Leon 1 in Chapter 17. Yeah, or even, like, Leon 2 in, like, the first part of the finale, because yeah, that Leon man has insane- that man has, like, a ton of bulk. Yeah, so the, basically the differentiator here is Hero, we hope, has better individual combat, whereas Warrior gets a strong support option. Yeah, it's worth noting as well that it's not like Warrior's combat would be, like, complete garbage either. Like, Warrior is still an axe class, like, even, like, he can still, still just stand there, things, yeah. like, with, like, the hand axe, with, like, 1-2 range, right? So, like, it's definitely, like, worse in terms of combat, but, like, it's still, like, not bad. And, like, the sport yeah, I mean, he would strong. even still double, like, the really slow, shitty monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we hope that that would make it a, a bit more of an interesting decision. You pick Hero if you want better Garcia combat. You pick Warrior uh, if you want a, a more supportive option that I think still that, has okay combat. I think that we discussed this before, but, like, I do think that, like we've now like kind of balanced it in a way that like i actually think that most like in most cases i would always take rally strength part of it's because i really like rallies in general and especially when they're multi-target like they're really strong for well, like your defensive options we also thought that part of the problem for garcia is just that he's not that good yeah we need to give so him something if, you're, <laughs> if the unit's not that good like sure you could improve his combat but Probably he's going to be better off supporting other units that are better than him, right? Yeah, definitely. But, like, maybe in, like, a draft or something, like, you could pick Garcia and use him as a combat unit, go hero. Yeah. Or you'd have him go, like, warrior in the supportive context. And, like, in that context, you'd be really happy with the rally strength, especially if, like, you've got Vanessa and you don't draft Colm, for instance. Yep. So that's, uh, that's Garcia. And after him, we have the Archer promotion, or yep. Amy. The Archer uh, promotion of my favorite Archer ever in the series. <laughs> so nice that you used three of them in one playthrough. I know, right? So this promotion's pretty lopsided. Yes. Yeah. Um, Bow Knight, extra move. Really good. It's nice to have an extra move. It's nice to have those D swords. It's rare, it's rare to say... It's nice to get those D swords in Fire Emblem 8, but it is. Bow Knight appreciates having one range as an option. Yeah, because it turns out that most enemies are still one range rather than one, two, or two. Yeah. Now, Sniper, in return, does get a few things going for it. Has the better strength, and Naomi does want that. She does, she does. And it has Sure Shot. Uh, yeah. Sure, sure Shot. Sure Everyone's shot gives you a, a level per, level percent. It's FE eight, so it's probably level percent. It's probably level percent. We think a level percent chance to be guaranteed to hit the enemy. But here's the thing: <laughs> she's already accurate. She doesn't. It's missing is not a big problem for an enemy. So having an unreliable way to fix hit is not the best for her. Yeah, like like her skill growth is like high so like if you are using her she'll be accurate bows have high hit as a weapon type 
and then, um, like, she even literally, like, gets, like, a free support handed to her on her join chapter, instant C with Calm. So, like, that already bolsters her his a bit, then. Yeah. So, what we did to change this one is we gave Sniper a boost in the combat stats, uh, so higher speed, which Naomi eventually becomes fast, yeah. but... Uh, she will actually just start doubling more things upon promotion with this. Oh, for sure. Boost. I mean, part of it as well um, is that, like, we didn't comment on the previous slide, but, like, we did, but, like, we have also re removed, like, two points of con from Bow Knight. Because previously, like, Bow Knight functionally had, like, a two con, like, a two con and, like, a two speed lead because of the fact that Naomi's starting con is not good. It's not good. Yeah, it's actually low enough that we had to make sure when we lowered the con on Bow Knight that we didn't accidentally buff her, buff her by making her able to rescue Hero Garrick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, Sniper is now notably faster. Um, yeah. But even then, we didn't think that was enough to counteract the point of move and the access to one range. No. So what so I suggested, yeah. So what I suggested was that we add quick draw, which is from Fates, I believe, and it adds like plus four damage when you attack on player phase. Which one? It's a sniper with only bows, probably only attacking on player phase, really, right? Yeah. Um, and like additionally, like you know, the move difference, the access to swords is already just—it's just such a huge like point in favor of Bow Knight, even with the like, functional, like, reduction of speed that we've had implemented, right? So, like, yeah. we had to, so, like, we had to give Sniper, like, significantly better combat. Yeah, and the other thing we were thinking is, like, what's the thing that player phase units are hypothetically good for? And it's for, like, killing a tricky enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the thing you would use a Sniper for is killing a difficult enemy, maybe you don't want to eat a counter, um... So, you know, almost like a like boss killing, tricky enemy killing. Yeah. Uh, and Naomi is now doing a functional plus eight damage against those enemies when she doubles, which she will pretty often. Yeah. And then it's even plus 16 if she doubles with like the brave bow, for instance. And like, yeah. hey, it even means that the long bow is slightly less awful as an option to attack with. Yeah. So now we think Naomi can actually fill the role of like, killing a tricky enemy on player phase. Not that you need to do that a ton in Sacred Stones, but also at not, least it's a yeah, niche. Also not something that you would do with Naomi, but like, it's it's, <laughs> an, it's an option. It's an option now. Yeah, well, realistically, you wouldn't do anything with Naomi, and you wouldn't yeah. use either of these promotion paths because you would sell her Orion's Bolt. But yes. if we've decided we are using her, this would be a niche for Sniper to do. Yeah, funnily enough, because of, like, the fact that we've now, like, given, like, okay, the, so the stats don't have to carry across for, like, male sniper. Like, this is female sniper, but, like, the skill does. So this has also caused the inadvertent effect of, like, improving Inez as well. <laughs> also, uh, enemy archers. <laughs> oh, yeah! Actually, I kind of like that. Because, <laughs> like, I feel like enemy snipers, you look at them and you're like, wow, so unthreatening. The only the only enemy archer I can think of that's scary and is is now going to be a bit more of a terror. There's two times actually. The distant blade sniper. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. The distant blade sniper is gonna be, would be will be fun to like fight with this. And the rangers in Hamel Canyon. The rangers don't have quick draw. Oh, you're right. They don't. We only gave it to sniper. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so really, just the distant blade sniper is now going to be a uh, a terror. Hey, that might actually be a way to like get me to like enjoy my experience of distant blade because you actually have to think about that sniper in normal play anyway. As you already should because distant blade is based. Um. But yeah, that's archer. Yep. Um. Next, we have our first class where we just thought it was fine. Thief yeah. is okay. So. There are statistical differences between Assassin and Rogue, but we don't really care about them. Uh, we think yeah. the, the main thing for Colm, because it's just Colm, his combat's not a big deal either way. Um, 
but we were like, it's fine, Assassin is better for combat if you want to, like, gamble on Silencer, and Rogue is better for opening chests, and yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like, we essentially felt that, like, Thief already kind of, like, covered the, like, you can choose which way you want to make this unit perform way, in that, like, Rogue is the very obvious utility choice, and then, you know, haha, funny, Silencer go burr. So, like, there wasn't really anything that we needed to change to make Ivo an appealing option. Yeah, so that one's okay. Hooray! And left it alone. Now it's time uh, for so... another single unit one! Mage F! Yes! Mage F, aka Loot. And this is a pretty lopsided one, I would say. Yeah, I... Why? Okay, like, I just don't understand what's with, like, the sages continuously getting, like, lower magic than, like, other things. Yeah, Especially, I have, like, yeah. an excuse for it with the bishop. I really don't get it here. Yeah. And, like, it's not even just, like, what- it's not even just, like, leads in, like, one offensive stat either. Because Mage Knight also gets, like, two more con on promo than sage. And loot joins you with four con- wait, wasn't it three con? It's free con, right? It's three or four. I know she gets weighed down by everything that isn't a fire tome. Uh, yeah, I know she gets weighed down by everything that isn't a fire tome, but like, okay, now I need to check this, because like, I feel like it's free, because I feel like I said it was before, in conversation before, and you were like, no, it's free. I also want to say it was three, because it was an astonishingly low amount. I remember being surprised. Yeah. Oh, uh, but it's really low. That two con is functionally two speed. Yes, it is indeed free. Ooh. So you can you can really think of that two con as two speed in most cases. Yeah, like, and I mean she should be wielding heavier tomes anyway, <laughs> if you want her to like do like properly good combat. So yeah. it's just so a speed lead. like, there's just not a ton that Sage is getting here. Mage Knight has higher magic, higher move. It's faster. It gets the same staff rank. Yeah. You lose a point of defense, but you have 1-2 range. I simply don't get hit. Yeah. Um, and like, you get light it, and magic, like, and but like it just doesn't point, matter. And like, the point of like, defense in like, Sage's favor, like, that's not going to like, that's not, that's almost never going to save loot from getting killed in the same number of combats as she would as a mage knight anyway. It's true, she's gonna be very squishy either way. Yeah. Like, she's, de she's getting two hit KO'd, like, that is happening by a physical enemy. Although, they did, um... They did give him light magic. You get light magic. Woo! <laughs> light magic has to be, like, the most nothing thing you can get on promotion. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I mean, like... Because at least, like... Even going back to, like, Warrior of Garcia, at least Bows is, like... It is, it is effective damage. And then swords, like, if you were to, for some reason, train him up to S-swords, which you shouldn't do, by the way, um, like, Odholma is a very good weapon. Yeah. Yeah, Odholma's great. Yeah. Uh, although, for, yeah. So, it, it, this one's just a weird one. Mage Knight's better at combat, it's more mobile, and it has the same utility. I don't really get what we're supposed to be picking Sage for. Yeah. I, I so, to that it. end, we changed it. Yep. Uh, and our goal here was to just make Sage a little better in the in the utility role, um, while yeah. also evening out the speed by just giving it two speed. Uh, it does make sense to me that Mage Knight has more con. That seems to be what happens when you get a mount. Yeah, uh, I agree. But there I agree. shouldn't be a speed difference, so we gave Sage two speed to compensate. And then we gave Sage sea staves, which is pretty nice for loot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing with loot is Arter gets to be a warp option in much more easily because he gets those sea staves from yeah. Bishop. Um, so we're, we're giving loot that option as well. Uh, if you want to be more mobile, you go Mage Knight. They're going to have similar combat because we evened out the magic as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to be more mobile, you'll go Mage Knight. And if you want to get loot to warp, uh, you'll go Sage. Yeah. Interestingly, like, this actually creates a situation in which, like, I mean, I've, okay, I still think that if you were to train one of Alta or Loot to be a warper, you'd still go with Alta, because, like, he exists during Chapter 4 for sure. 
Whereas, like, loot obviously does not necessarily actually exist then, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but, like, she actually does now make a case for being your potential warper because, like, she does end up with really high magic, right? So it's yes, easier. she can actually hit the, the warp range that Saleh hits. Yeah. Uh, whereas Arter can't. Like, even if you use Arter as your warper, if you want to do, like, a giant mer warp in the last chapter, you're going to have to grind Saleh's uh, staff rank up too. Yeah. Uh, whereas loot, hypothetically, uh, could actually hit that warp range. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Arta could, like, theoretically hit it, but you'd have to get really lucky. Whereas, you'd have to like, get lucky, yeah. Whereas, like, loot is, like, statistically more likely to actually hit the threshold that you need. Yeah. Uh, and that's that threshold with stat boosters, actually, because... Uh, yeah. A, a fun fact about that warp is Saleh usually takes two energy rings to hit it. <laughs> yep. Uh, so next up we have Myrmidon, uh, a.k.a. Joshua. For some uh -huh. reason, I you couldn't mean find a transparent portrait of him, so you get this cute little hero's chibi art of him. Hey, Lizard, Lizard, you mean Myrmidon M? There's another Myrmidon? Oh, you're right. We'll get to her shortly. <laughs> so, the devs must have thought Silencer was really strong, huh? Yeah. Because these stats are lopsided. <laughs> Incredibly so. Like, you get your point of strength, which matters a lot, yeah. actually. For Joshua, it matters. Uh, you get your two points of HP. Uh, that's not as big a deal. Um, you get a point of con all in exchange for one point of resistance. Oh no! Whatever will I do without my points of resistance, Lizard? <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, w would you agree that crit plus 15 is actually just better than Silencer? Yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, so, so this is... Actually, perhaps one of the most lopsided ones yet, because Swordmaster has almost every statistical lead. They have the weapon rank bonus, and they have the better skill. Yeah. Like, I I, I, I don't know what they were cooking. I guess, like, they maybe, like, look back at Jafar in FE7 and were like, well, we made this dude really good because we gave him really cracked bases. So, like, we don't, let's, like, give them worse promo gains, forgetting that, you know... It's not like Joshua, as an assassin, is going to have, like, however much strength Jafar does at base. <laughs> yeah, so all we really did to change this one, we just gave assassin a point of strength. We think it's okay that assassin is, like, worse than swordmaster, because it's just the class you pick if you want to do silencer gambling. Yeah, I mean, it's it was the same reasoning, really, behind, like, the thief promotion staying the same, right? Like, swordmaster and assassin, like, already kind of fundamentally, like... I guess, appeal to two different styles of play. We just wanted to, like, kind of make Assassin, like, actually potentially do something if, like, they don't proc silencer. Yeah, like, there is... I, I understand why people pick Assassin, because silencer is fun. And I think that's, like, a good enough reason for a class to exist. But really no reason they need to have a strength difference. Yeah. I agree, I agree. Uh, so this next one... I think is perhaps the closest promotion choice in the game. Yeah, I agree. And it's I also mean, not and that I mean, important. And I mean that in terms of like actually like close, like not like the thief case of close where it's like it's close because there's two such fundamentally different like units that you get out of it. Right? No, like in, this in, in this case, it's like actually I could understand why you would go with either because I think basically this is similar to like the Molder one where I think it kind of depends like where your staff EXP is at. Yeah. When you hit promotion level. Um, mm -hmm. But the nice thing about Natasha is you don't usually need her to Latona. But like if you want her to Latona, then she's probably going to have to go Bishop. But yeah, um, she really just needs ace staves. So if she's at ace staves, then you can just go Valkyrie and take the higher move. Um, whereas if you're not, you'll go Bishop, get the Staff EXP, and get to Warp. Yeah, basically. Like, S Slayer we both don't think is that good, but, like, we think that, like, it's enough of a factor that it's kind of, fu it's fine that Valkyrie yeah, gets like point if, of magic. If, if for some reason you care about combat for Natasha, Slayer is fine, I guess. Especially yeah. since she's likely to promote fairly late, and you're 
you know, going to be fighting monsters at that point. Yeah. It's not important, but it is something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so our conclusion, this one's okay. We didn't change it. Woo! Uh, next we have Myrmidon F, that other Myrmidon we were talking about. Yep, the other Myrmidon! With five con. <laughs> yeah, aka Marissa with five con. I- I really did feel like- I mean, this wasn't even my slide, right? Like, this was your slide, but I feel- I just felt like I had to, like, comment on that. Yeah. I- I recently used Marissa in a draft run, and... <laughs> she was worse than that. The con is a- the con is a problem, okay? It There's, is... like, actually just shit she- she doesn't double as- as a Myrmidon. Um, also, not pictured here is her starting with D-Swords. Uh, you cannot give her a killing edge at face. Wait, what? She joins with D-Swords? She does. What? I didn't know that! That's so let bad! Me, like, let me make sure I'm not, like, gaslighting you, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Because I remember being like, why can't I give you a killing edge? Oh my god. If this is true, I actually, like... <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I need to- I'm just gonna check Joshua's weapon right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, she starts at D-Swords. Meanwhile, Joshua starts at C! No! <laughs> yeah, so, like, like, you can't even, like, I used to always say, like, oh, I mean, she's bad, but, like, I guess if you want to train her, you could, like, give her a killing edge and she could kill some stuff. She can't. She can't use it. Great. The, oh, oh my gosh, that's... Wow, what a unit. What um, a unit. But, I mean, this is basically, I mean, the numbers are a little bit different, but, like, fundamentally, this is pretty similar to the, um... Uh, male Swordmaster, the difference is being Assassin actually gets a point of speed here. Yeah. Uh, however, Swordmaster gets a point of con, and as we've just been harping on, Marissa has five con. Yeah, so, so it's, it's the same speed. They have the same speed. <laughs> uh, I will say something that's, like, more relevant for her. Actually, it's kind of relevant for both of them, but for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, sword plus 40 uh, matters. Yes. Uh, like, you actually do want to get her sword rank up. Um... Whereas the reason it matters for Joshua is so that he can use Ald Holma and like fight Kalak if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason it matters for Marissa is so that you can use a killing edge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, I would hope that by the time that she promotes, she would already be able to use a killing edge, but like, she still needs st those stronger weapons well, regardless. Well, I think she doesn't need like a lot of combats to get to, uh, to 10. Like, she- I- I think, like, if you're just having her last hit, it's, like, probably possible to get her there before her sword rank is C. You're right. Yeah, you're right. I think if you're, like, having her, like, actually fight enemies, she'll probably get there, but... But- but even if you have the C rank, so, like, you care about this plus 40. Yeah, you care about the plus 40. Whether helping you get to C or helping you get to B. Like, um, like, you if you- if, if you've already hit C, you want her to get higher rank so she can use a silver sword faster. Yeah, either way, you want this, uh, this 40 sword XP. Yeah. Uh, so, like Joshua, all we really did here was add a point of strength for the reasons we already discussed. Um, Swordmaster has an edge here, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, maybe... I actually think Marissa, there's, there's maybe, like, Silencer looks a little more enticing, right? Because... I mean, Silencer is a bit uh, more some, enticing. Sometimes she not crits and it's... doesn't kill something, so... Yeah, so, I mean, Silencer <laughs> is more enticing on Marissa, not because her combat is good, it's because her combat is worse, which means that, like, she's actually probably more likely to kill things sometimes by proccing Silencer. Yep. And so that's the first half of the classes. Thank you for listening to the first half of the classes. Yes. There's another half of the classes. My where side! Can, where can they hear about those, Akira? They can hear about that on my channel! So, check out the other side, where we have Garrick onwards. And all yes, the trainees. You'll find a, a link for that in the description. Yep. So, hope to see you there. And big thank you to my patrons, Danny Doyle and Helix, for supporting the channel. If you want a shout out at the end of the videos, you can also sign up for the Patreon. You'll find a link to that in the description. And if you liked the video and you want to see more content like it, consider hitting the subscribe or like button or hopping in the community Discord. You'll find a link to that in the description. But regardless, go check out Akira's half of the video and have an awesome week. <laughs>